Welcome to Lab 2, Viscosity of Non-Newtonium Fluid Using the Brookfield Rotational Viscometer. As we know, fluid viscosity is defined as the internal resistance to fluid flow. The objective of Lab 2 is to, term, is to determine the viscosity of a non-Newtonian fluid at atmospheric pressure and room temperature as a function of shear rates using the Brookfield Programmable Viscometer. The equipment required is this viscometer, the spindle, the sample container, the guard leg, um, the polymer solution, and a 600 milliliter beaker. The principle of operation of this viscometer is to drive a spindle through a calibrated spring. The viscous drag of the fluid against the spindle is measured by the spring deflection. Spring deflection is measured with a, with a rotary transducer. The measurement range of the viscometer in centipoise, or millipascal seconds, is determined by the rotational speed of the spindle, the size and shape of the spindle, the container the spindle is rotating in, and the full-scale torque of the calibrated spring. Collecting a spindle is a trial and error process. An appropriate selection will result in measurements made between 10 and 100 percent on the instrument torque scale. These two general rules will help in the trial and error process. First, viscosity range is inversely proportional to the size of the spindle, and second, viscosity range is, inversely, is also inversely proportional to the rotational speed. So for the purposes of this experiment, we're going to use spindle number 18. It has an 18 on its stem. So the first thing that we're going to do is turn on the viscometer with an on-off switch on the back of it. And we're going to follow the directions on this keypad. So it tells us to remove the spindle. We don't have a spindle attached. And then it says press any key. So I'm going to go ahead and press a key. So now it's telling us to replace the spindle. But before we can do that, we need to fill our sample container with 20, around 25% full with our polymer solution using this. It's going to take about three um, squeezes to get to 25%. Be careful because this fluid is very viscous and it will make a mess. sure that the container is only around 25% full so that we have enough fluid to completely cover the spindle once it's in the container and so it also doesn't overflow when we put the spindle in the container. So now that our sample container is around 25% full, we're going to go ahead and attach it. There's a little groove which you want to match up with the inside of this container. So we're going to place it below Push it up until the grooves match together and then lock it in place. So now our sample container won't go anywhere. Then we're going to take our spindle and slowly place it in the sample container. We're going to attach our spindle to the viscometer tightening in a clockwise motion. Okay, make sure that your spindle is fully submerged in the polymer solution before continuing. Now, since we've replaced the spindle, we're going to go ahead and keep following the directions. Now, press any key. There's four different things that you can see from this. You can see the viscosity, what it will measure once it's turned on, you can see the temperature of the fluid, or you can see the, the percent torque, and you can see the RPMs. Right now, it's off. We're going to be adjusting the RPMs to take our measurements. So to do that, we use the up and down arrows. Our first measurement will be taken at 12 RPMs. So we set speed. Turn the motor on. Our percent 
report says that it's at 41 percent, which is in between our range of 10 percent and 100 percent. And it's also telling us that at this RPM, the viscosity of our fluid is around 104 centivoids. We can also use the select display key to display the shear stress, and if you press it again, it also displays the shear rate. So at 12 RPMs, our shear rate is 15.8, and our shear stress is 16.6. Okay, so now we need to take at least five more readings with different RPMs, and to be sure to measure the shear rate and the viscosity for each of these readings in order to be able to, pl to plot the relationship on a graph. To change the speed, we'll use the up and down arrows. So now we'll set it at 30 RPMs and set the new speed. We'll take our readings from there as well. Up to 60 RPMs and set the speed. Record those readings. When I turn it up to 100 RPM, if you can see the screen, it's giving me there's an error on the torque, which means that our torque percentage is not between 10 and 100 percent anymore. And what we need to do in order to, the, to correct this is to lower our speed so we fall between the ranges once again. So we're going to change the speed back down to 50 and set it so we have an appropriate torque range. So before recording each of your measurements, be sure that the reading on the viscometer has stabilized to ensure accuracy. And also, when you're plotting your shear stress versus viscosity, we need to get these points and find this relationship to determine what kind of fluid we actually have here. When we're finished taking our readings, then we're going to turn off the viscometer, undo everything, and then clean it thoroughly.